Hey you guys, welcome back to Fireside Chats. Um, I'm your host, Rebecca, and I'm so excited to introduce to you one of my yogi buddies. Her name is Shannon, and she has been doing and teaching and immersing people in meditation um, for about four years. Um, and I just can't wait for her to tell you little bits about what meditation can look like, um, what it can feel like and accomplish for you, um, and a little bit about her story. So everyone welcome Shannon to our fireside chat. Dun, 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 dun. So this fireside chat, as well as all of them, fit into a framework of seven foundations. And the foundation that we're focusing on tonight is to refresh your perspective or to brighten your perspective to reduce your stress level. Um, and that's, that's what something that all of us need, right, Shannon? Definitely. Over and over again. Definitely. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Every day there's more stress, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let me tell you guys a little snippet about Shannon. She has, she's a massage therapist, a kindred spirit to me, um, for 20 years, longer than me, by the way, she's, uh, <laughs> <clears throat> probably amazing. Shannon, I need to get under your hands soon. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming to the Fuel and Flow Fest. Maybe then. <laughs> Yay. Okay. Um, so Shannon's also been loving yoga for about 10 years and um, got certified to teach yoga about seven years ago. Is that right, Shannon? Yeah. Okay. Good. Now that I have the specs right, um, you told me when we were talk chatting before we started that you started, um, being interested in the sound bath idea. So tell us what made you interested in the sound bath? What is a sound bath? And what, what was that like for you? Yeah. So I had tried out, um, a, a couple of different styles of meditation I'd read about it, you know, we're all kind of hearing about mindfulness and meditation and its benefits. People are using it in like drug and alcohol rehabilitation programs, um, weight loss, lots of different ways. But I kind of just wanted it for that like mind body connection. And so I had been doing a, more of a silent Japanese Zen style meditation and I'm sitting on the cushions right now. I don't know if you can see them. But this, woo, this round cushion is a Zafu, and the square cushion is a Zabuton. And what so I jumped in. What's that? Tell us what those names are, what they mean. Oh, Zafu and Zabuton are just the names for the different shaped cushions. Oh, or okay. um, like in Zen style Buddhism, when you would sit, you would sit on cushions like this, and you just sit silently. Put your hands in a mudra for a long, a long time. Like we were doing like 20 minute silent meditation and that was cool, but I, I was exploring lots of different kinds and I'll tell you about an app that I use that's free that I love, but I tried, so there was a, I don't know if you've met Daphne out of Pocatello, but I tried her sound bath. She came up to Idaho Falls and we went in and she had these bowls. So I have a few of my bowls here. Yes, let's see the bowls. bowls. Woo, and then there's my other two bowls. So, um, and I can play one. I don't know what it'll sound like on here, but I went and you lay down in front of the bowls and she played them. And she would do, mix in some words, visualizations and play the bowls. And I had worked um, an eight hour back to back massage day, which I don't, I only do maybe once a week that many. And as a massage therapist, you know, that's a that's a long day for a massage therapist. Like yes. I know there's people out there that do that every day of the week. Massage therapists usually do like 25 hours is like a full-time job. So eight hours, went to this thing, felt amazing the next day. And I thought, was it mm. the bowl? <laughs> like, did those recharge me? And I tried it again like a month later. And I'm usually pretty exhausted after a long day like that. And again, I felt refreshed. I felt clarity in my mind. I felt just like lots of energy. So um, I asked where she bought the bowls, went to Utah, went to the place just to look at them and went home with some. So <laughs> isn't that funny how that happens? <laughs> it's not happened. Yeah, totally. 
Okay, so a so a bowl, the crystal they're made out of crystal, right? Yeah. Okay, and they're kind of like an instrument, like a chime that you hit and you you know you continue the sound, right? With your wand? Baton? Yeah. What do you call that part? Um, yeah, I don't know. You could probably call it either one. Mallet, but the mallet's more of like the rubber thing. You can actually woo or hit them with those too. And um, they're, they're to help. So instead of like the silent meditation, it's usually really hard for people when they start because we're used to our mind just going and going. And sometimes in meditation, like from India or in the Asian countries, they'll call it monkey mind or puppy mind because it's just going, going, going. That's like how we usually function, right? Mm -hmm. So I love, then I when, love the image of monkey mind. That's like right. so real. Yeah, it captures the like buzziness that we're usually in. So if you if you take most people that have never meditated and you say, okay, hold very still and just be silent, that, that's gonna stress a lot of people out. And then they're gonna be like, that's not for me, I'm not gonna meditate. So mm -hmm. the bowls are a way to help you go right to the present moment. Because every time you hear that note, right? brain is like oh yeah I was supposed to be like breathing and thinking about stillness and right here right now and letting all the monkey mind stuff just go off to the side so that's cool I cool. like the sound because it helps people zone in and hold hold still in the monkey mind not just their body so if I understand what you just said right um you have you, you, you begin a meditation and when your mind naturally wanders to other stuff, it's easier to come back with the sound that you hear because it's like sensory input and it like interrupts your monkey mind and helps you remember, oh yeah, I'm meditating, let's restart. Yeah, that's why I like it. And that's why I think a few people that have come to my meditation that, you know, maybe think like aren't as comfortable with silent meditation, mm. like to try that out. Besides that, you've got the vibrational qualities, you've got the quartz crystal that, um, you know, you can read up on like all of the benefits that you're getting besides that. But with sound, you can get that at home too, that brings your mind back to the moment, like you were saying. Yeah, exactly. With um, refocusing monkey mind over and over again. Yeah. And that's how it begins, right? Yes. Yeah. Because that's the old... I don't know where it came from, but we got this old idea that meditation is to empty your mind and have it be just like nothingness. But our brain is wired to, to throw ideas up there constantly. There's constantly like signals going on in our brain. We're not going to shut the signals down. That's not how our brain functions. But our reactivity to that is what we're training. So just like an exercise with a muscle, we're training our mind to not react every time a thought comes up. Oh, that's, that's a good way to explain it. So is that um, what I'm kind of understanding from what you just said when you said like a muscle? It's meditation is more like balance as opposed to perfect stillness in your mind. Yeah, it's, um, and, and you're, you're, when you do more of a regular practice, it can be daily, that's ideal, obviously, but you know, maybe you're just starting with every other day or every week. And every time, just like exercising your physical body, you put that into place, you're creating this experience that your body's learning how to do something differently. And if just like exercising the physical body, if you stop, you'll see the effects start to go away too. So when I meditate regularly, I don't get mad in traffic. I don't react to my kids as often. Like I, I notice results in how I respond. There's this pause that comes up in my life. And then when I slip and I don't meditate regularly, that all comes back. I start to be grumpy more often. I start to like react to what people say, take things personally, all those fun things that we do with our monkey mind. <laughs> wow, oh, so some of the benefits you just said were um, from meditating are that you have more peace, um, a lower uh, irritability level, like a higher threshold for being able to handle daily stuff without getting over 
taxed emotionally. Is that all accurate for like, that's what meditating does for you? For me. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, and a lot of that can be for some people, it can be like a vague sort of result, but I also listen to a lot and read a lot of books about it. So I'm not just doing the sound bays or the silent meditation. I'm reading about what, how that works and what goes on in the mind. And so I think everybody's experience will be different. It's kind of like a, a fascinating hobby for me too, to learn all about it. But um, I think when you're learning in, in more of the Buddhist flavor, I would say, that's kind of worked into a lot of different versions of meditating. We learn what's going on in those moments of stillness. So sometimes instead of the monkey mind going, an answer will bubble up in that stillness. Uh -huh. So you're getting information, but it's this like clear, nice, calm moment. And then you're like, oh, that's why this always bothers me. It's because it reminds me of this thing from my childhood or whatever. Like you'll get this beautiful insight about yourself too. So mm. yeah, there's like the day-to-day -day patience. And then there's also this like, almost like psychological, like digging up that can happen too. Wow. I like both sides of that benefit. So you get yeah. this, <laughs> what you feel every day that can shift as you get better at meditating and then also um those moments of inspiration where you just you're able to hear them because there's not monkey mind going on right yeah i think there's so many times in my life when i wish i could hear <laughs> better inspiration so i think i should meditate more often <laughs> yeah and i and i lose it when i'm not doing it and i and I get into those, uh, you know, mini addictive patterns where you're like, I'm going to Netflix binge instead of deal with my stuff that I'm supposed to do, or I'm going to eat lots of sugar because I'm stressed out. And when I'm meditating, I know, oh, I'm reaching for that because of this. Like I, I see everything more clearly. And then you're mindfully going, I'm really sad right now and I'm going to have an extra piece of cake. And I know very well that it's because I'm sad. And so then at least you're owning your choices instead of just mindlessly going through our life when we when we have bad habits that we want to get rid of and we're like where are these coming from yeah i think that could be helpful in a lot of areas of our life that's that's yeah. cool that's we all could use those better handles on yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on our on our patterns okay yeah. so shannon tell me about what different kinds of meditations that you've been exposed to um, so one, one kind of more Zen style, um, that a lot of people, we can all do this one is, uh, and I brought a little candle because awesome. there's like a visual meditation. So some people, the sound is going to keep them focused and for other people, it's looking at a fixed point. And so it can be anything that you're looking at. It doesn't have to be a candle. Candles are just fun to look at because they're, you know, there's the mesmerizing little flicker. And so you can have your thing that you're looking at, your fixed point, and you just kind of like drop your gaze kind of halfway closed. It's almost like one of those magic eye books where you're like kind of going out of focus and then the thing comes into shape. You're like aware of the space around you and you're aware of the thing in front of you. And then your mind kind of does that too. It just kind of zones out and then you, you get some of that clarity to come up. So you can do fixed point gaze meditation. You can do sound meditation. Um, you can do silence. I wore, wore my mala beads, so I'd remember to tell you some people use those for meditating. How do and they use those? 108 beads. So I have these, just the red ones or the 108. And you count, you would, the traditional way, there's like a certain way that you do it with your thumb and your hand. And I'm not like super hardcore Buddhist, so I don't really do the specific holding and all of the rules, but it's to help you do 108 chants. So you could have a prayer that you say over and over again. Um, chanting though is less like the praying style I grew up with because praying for me was all in my thinking mind. It was like complaining to God or being really grateful and thanking to God and then chant 
chant and Malabi kind of repetition is more of that like zoning out. So you, you're getting a rhythm and a pattern going in your head and it's soothing and it brings clarity. So that's what that's for. So you'll just do like many people do the Om Mane Padme Hum, which is the jewel in the heart of the lotus, famous kind of prayer. Mm -hmm. Just say that over and over again. You can even just say- That reminds me of MASH. This is not yeah. the, <laughs> this is dating myself, but my <laughs> husband likes mash. And I think that, uh, that's what the guy said that had everyone be upside down. Right. Really? Oh, money pod my own. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's yeah, it's classic. Yeah. I mean, it's one everybody's probably heard of if they've heard of any, then they probably heard of that one. What's the point of the ohm and the, and the words said out loud in a chant? So when you say ohm, it's very base base like ancient sound almost like it's if you listen to amen and ohm they're very similar mm. intonations and phrases and rhythm and so there's lots of vowels a little bit of consonants and when you're saying that the vibration happening inside of you is a lot like these bowls so you're creating vibration with your own instrument and it's it's bringing clarity to your cells right like when you see sound waves travel across water, you can see how water is affected by that. And these are sound waves traveling through the water in our bodies, the cells in our body. So you're physically affected by it. You're hearing it, all of that. And it sounds like it's another way to like that um, stimulation. Yeah. From the senses to help your monkey Angry. brain go back to your focus, right? Yeah, it's really hard to have your brain go off and worry about something you said a week ago if you're repeating something 108 times. Because gotcha. it's really hard to just remember to say the thing 108 times. <laughs> so you've just taken a break from monkey mind for sure. Wow, I, I, I'm imagining that that could be pretty powerful if our minds are the device that's stressing us out because it's constantly yeah. fretting. And if we take that break to say something like peace or amen 108 right. times, how, you know, how long would that take? Like a couple minutes? Um, Ooh, I haven't done it for a while. I was really, when I made this, I was really getting into the practice of trying it out. Um, I feel like 10 minutes, but I, I could be wrong. And I don't remember how long the chant was. My favorite chant is Om Gate Gate Paragate Parasam Gate Bodhisvaha. So it's a little longer. Mm. And so if I was doing that one, it might've taken longer to do 108. <laughs> but still like, let's say 20 minutes and it gives you a break, yeah. a break from worrying for 20 minutes, right? Right, and you're not being silent and holding still for 20 minutes, but that's a different level of challenge because say, if I'm gonna sit here, right? Mm -hmm. And not move for 20 minutes, you get to ignore every itch, Every little like, oh, I want to adjust my seat, scratch mm. my head. Like you're supposed to just let that all go and realize I don't have to do every single thing my body tells me to do. I can wait. I can mm. wait it out. I can get through those signals and nothing happens. Nothing bad happens. Like your foot goes to sleep. Well, is that something I need to respond to right now or can I ignore it and respond to it in five minutes? So is it emergency or not? Right, right. Yeah. Okay, so let's, so the chanting and the holding the beads could be more helpful for people that would struggle sitting still, right? Yeah, and if, um, if they like the idea of like wearing something, if that reminds them, I put this on today because I promised myself I'd meditate. If it's a, like a physical act that helps you remember, that might be a reason you pick mala beads. Maybe you just think they look cool. I don't know. Like there, there's a craze of mala beads out there for a while. And I don't know if everybody's meditating with them or not, but um, yeah, the sound bowls is the one that really clicked with me. And then. Um, and it's not because you felt the difference with them pretty immediately. Yeah, I think so. I get maybe I had been doing the silent stuff for a while too, and it was the change. I like change. Mm -hmm. So maybe in a few years, I'll have a new thing that I love, a way that I love to meditate. But yeah, speaking of, of different styles, you said you didn't do the necklacing 
you haven't done it in a while. So what does your meditation practice look like right now? Um, right now, I, so I read or I learned somewhere in yoga training, somebody said that if you want to get rid of an old habit, you kind of piggyback a good habit into the spot for a while and then ease the old one out. And so instead of picking up my phone first thing off my nightstand and getting on stupid stuff like social media or reading emails or whatever, I decided I was gonna put a meditation app on my phone and before I was allowed to do anything else, I had to listen to one, even if it was like a three minute or a five minute meditation, I would listen to that before I moved on with my day. And so that was just one of those easy, you're really busy, you're gonna at least do that and hopefully it will add to better things later kind of things. So that's what you do right now or that's how it started? Yeah, yeah, that's what I do now um, mostly. And the sound bathes, I try to go to those, let's see, maybe two or three times a month. So um, when you say go to a sound bathe, what is that like? Um, so I did one at my house the other day, but I do them all over town. I do, them. um, there's a local art museum I do them at. There's some like exercise studios. There's and mostly that's who's inviting me and I'm going with is like a yoga studio. And so I'll bring my gong and a set of bowls and people come in and we either move first, which yoga was designed to prepare you for meditation. And we've oh, turned it into exercise now. Yeah, weird, huh? So yeah. it's become, it's just become another way to exercise in the West, but originally it was a way to basically get your wiggles out, like you say to little kids, and like- Like I do with my <laughs> three and four year old. Yeah, exactly. And you're connecting your, your mind and your body. It's almost like beginning the vibrations too, when you move your muscles, when you, when you move in these flows of yoga poses, and then you come to stillness, you're ready for the stillness a little bit better. So we'll do a little movement, then we'll lay down, pull blankets over us, put a pillow under your head, and then just listen to the bowls for like a half an hour. That's cool. That's cool. So why do you keep doing that? Why does that still win a spot on your schedule? Um, for me to go or for me to perform them? Either one. Um, for me to perform them was funny because people just started asking me to do them. And then I, you know, added other instruments like the gong and I just got a rain stick and, uh, it, it just seems to be what I'm supposed to be doing and it found me kind of thing. But the reason I go is because every time I pick up a new thing and add it to my practice as a career, I lose the benefits from it. As soon as I'm doing it for other people. Mm. it's not the same it's i i can give 20 massages in a week and i have not gotten a massage <laughs> this is not the same thing right right so teaching yoga not the same as doing yoga especially because i walk around the room and help people and so sound bays i'm not getting much of the benefit it's i'm still exposed to the vibration but i'm not laying there soaking it in and meditating so yeah i promise myself that to keep a connection with that's the reason I started it was because I loved it I needed to go out there and be present and take care of myself but I also want to support my friends that are doing this too and I mm -hmm. think that's just some of like the yogic healing lifestyle way it's very not capitalist right like I'm not going oh they're my competition <laughs> like mm -hmm. you know Muscle out the competition is how you would if you were running a regular business. But in all of these healing arts, we've all sort of come to respect each other and, and want there to be all these other healing presences out there. And so if, if I'm not going to go support those people, why should they come and support me? You know, like I want that to be a community instead of just me. I'm the best bowl player. Come and see me only, you know. I want to go see. It kind of sounds like you also need them too, because yeah. you needed to hear it and without doing it, without performing it in order to have the best results, right? Yeah, definitely both, both reasons. Cool. So if someone is just getting into this and let's say that they um, either live outside of the area where they could easily go to a sound bath or they don't know who to ask and they're just getting going, 
what are some easy meditation techniques they can use to just get themselves started with the habit? Uh, breathing is a really good way. If you, if you don't, if you don't want to do the app, that app is where I would start. Cause that's, it's a free app. It's called insight timer. And it's gone from like a few thousand different kinds of meditations to probably 12,000 different choices. Wow. Okay. Anything from religious prayers to talks. They have like Ted talk speakers on there. They have psychologists they have buddhist chanting silence just meta music bowls everything so that's the first step i would say if you want an at-home practice you could do um square breathing is the kind of breathing they teach navy seals and like swat teams and uh first responders that need to calm their fight or flight response down in the body mm -hmm. and so you just breathe and imagine that square so you're imagining a shape when you breathe and at the top of the square you're breathing in or you can breathe up top hold the breath exhale down the other side and hold the breath again so you just do it for four counts four hold for four exhale four hold for four again so that's a way that you can keep your mind focused on what you're doing and then you're learning to fill the lungs up. You'd be surprised how many adults are like, there, I breathed. Like right here, the sure. breath goes like far down <laughs> and then you're done. So yeah, I think a breathing technique would be a really good way to start at home. I'm going to sit there and breathe for, you know, 10 rounds of breath, or I'm going to breathe for five minutes or whatever. Hmm. Okay. So breathing would be one way. And then the sound sound bathing different kind of instruments or maybe listening to an audio of instruments playing yeah and i um i would shy away personally i shied away from anything that was familiar anything that like if i liked and grew up with classical music or church hymns or songs with words in them i stayed away from all of that because that's going to take me into my thinking mind into nostalgia into stories and that's exactly where you're trying not to be for those moments so pick something that's new that you can just kind of like zone out to instead of things that you're like oh yeah i'm gonna start humming along to this because that's up here and it's not like being present <laughs> in the same way that we're looking for so listening to something new helps you to experience it and be present instead of going down rabbit trails right right yeah new and and you can keep doing the new thing until it becomes old but its associations are this only right like meditation relaxing staying in the present all that cool okay so that's another way is with sound and listening do you ever do and oh and the third way we've talked about so far is with a, re a repetitive word, right? Yeah, chanting or that kind of thing, right. I've heard people that like they have their one word that they want more of in their life and they just will say that over and over again to refocus on it. Yeah, I Does think so. It depends. If uh, you, you kind of have to play with it and find the results coming up because mm -hmm. I've tried a few things and I've found it, it's not helping and it's also something i learned doing the zen buddhist silent style was they don't believe in going into a meditation session with a goal like an expectation mm -hmm. i failed at meditating because i did not find peace right they that's not the way you meditate <laughs> you meditate because you said you would because it's a daily practice each day will have a different feeling, right? Maybe I'll meditate for five minutes. I'll be in my monkey mind the whole time. I'll be grumpy, whatever. That still counts. I still meditated. I still showed up. I still was taking care of myself. And when I do that every day for like five or 10 days, then I might have a day where I'm like, whoa, you know, I'll get answers from inside or I'll feel peace. And I, those are great, but the daily practice 
is like the main thing to show up for because the results don't come if you if you don't get the daily practice in gotcha so just try it maybe download the app get, some, <laughs> get a few practices under your belt and yeah start to experience what do you like and then you'll get like oh I kind of don't really prefer this kind of meditation I like this yeah. yeah if you're getting really frustrated and you hate it it's probably not the style you're gonna stick with so just like exercise right like if you go to a weightlifting class and you're suddenly like oh this is what I've been missing all my life I hate aerobics I love weightlifting you know? how would you know unless you try it yeah exactly exactly um hmm I'm trying to pull this together and maybe describe for, for people what um, a, like a typical meditation would be like. What do they have to like, what, what would do you in your life, Shannon, as a mother and as a massage therapist and all the things you have going on in your life, a practitioner, what do you have to like put in place to make sure that you will meditate and actually do the habit that you're wanting to put into your day? Um, I think the thing that works, sorry, there's a cattail walking by. <laughs> Hi, cattail. <laughs> I think what worked for me in the beginning to really get benefits and results and changes through a meditation practice was accountability. So there was a meditation group in town. And mm. uh, when I showed up regularly, it was like a Monday night. And when I started to go somewhere else and show up, that's when I started getting results. I have a really hard time getting a, like a sit down, take care of myself, meditation practice going on at home because of all those distractions. I'm, I'm associating so much with why am I sitting here? I could be doing the dishes, right? Like nice. there's so much of that have to weird connection. I can't stay out of monkey mind as much at home. If I go to a separate place and I meet with people and we've all been accountable like this is where we're meeting on monday night that's called a sangha s-a-n-g-h-a in um, buddhism and that's just a community a group of people supporting each other and so if you're like me and you know your at-home practice is going to be eh, iffy most of the time then you might want to find or start a sangha start just a group of people that like some places will donate the space um, some places say just accept donations and give us whatever you can come up with so that you can use that space to meditate. And a, cool a lot, yeah, a lot of yoga studios will even allow a donation based class to start up once a week for that reason. They're all about, you know, karma yoga or yoga that's to give back to the community. And if meditation is how they find that in their studio, then you might be the one to instigate it. And I, I found that that works better. Sangha? Sangha, yeah. Sangha. Cool. Yeah, they're really great. I mean, it's like I grew up religious and I don't go to the church I used to go to. And so it's almost like you can see when you remove yourself from like the rules or whatever the people associate with the religion, you can step back and see, oh, that's like what humans need when they go to any of these groups and organizations is to like show up for each other, accountability, you know, so you get that with a meditation sangha sometimes too. Mm. So I'm thinking about how I could make that real in my life as I'm starting this meditation practice. And um, I think that I'm doing what you're talking about, but I'm just doing it with my kids. But oh. like every night at bedtime, um, my kids have been having trouble getting back to sleep because we're like in Christmas break mode and, you know, all the excuses and an hour later, they're still getting drinks and going pee, right? Ha <laughs> ha. Yep. So we, we started this um, group in the evening and they'll even remind me, mom, are we going to meditate tonight? It's so cool. <laughs> I just cute. push play on one of the recorded things in an app and um we listen to it together and by the time we're done usually my four-year-old is asleep and my 12-year-old who has trouble sleeping is ready to rest and my girls aren't talking all night like I like it so I love that you say getting started maybe your home isn't the best place or maybe you're too distracted in one area go to a new place and or maybe be accountable with other people right even if it's your family members I can't get my kids on board because it's what I do for a job. And so 
if I want to do the meditating thing, it's almost like, I don't know, like, yeah, I think a lot of people do that. If you bring your kids into your work environment thing, it's just such a have to. Oh yeah. And then, but yeah, I've, I've tried the, the guided meditation recordings to help them sleep for sure a few times before they go to bed. And that is a really nice tradition. Mm. Yeah, sometimes it only takes 10 minutes to get them yeah. the zone for sleep, which oh. is so cool. I'm totally, <laughs> totally loving this as a mom. Nice. Okay, so um, that's how your meditation practice started, was going to a sangha and doing it kind of um, with others in the same set, the same mode. And then what do you do... Um, currently is that where you wake up in the morning and you turn on the app yeah so I do I do that as like probably daily with the insight timer some days I'll have longer I'll do a whole hour and some days I'll just have like five minutes and then I usually create a space at the end of every yoga class and I teach four to six times a week and then I try to do about a weekly sound bathe so again, those are when I'm working, but to do a sound bathe, you have to create a space of kind of like, I don't want what I'm bringing to vibrate out into the crowd, right? If I believe in intentions and energy and you know your vibe, then I have to get my vibe right before I play these bowls and gong. Or I feel like it will be like amplified into the room that I'm at. And so for me, it's, it's almost a meditative practice to get ready and show up to teach yoga or to teach or to hold a sound base. So my practice is looking very strange, <laughs> but um, yeah, I do uh, the Sangha that I used to meet with. It's a very not Buddhist town. And so it got smaller and smaller and smaller and everybody's lives changed. And we turned into a book club that hangs out like once every few months <laughs> because we can't meet on that day anymore. And so I would like to create that again somewhere, uh, you know, with community and there's like a weekly meditation. So well, it looks like you have a beautiful room set up that you could like totally do it in your room. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think you've given us all a pretty good understanding of meditation could be so many things and yeah. whatever we were thinking before, I hope that people that are watching understand they could do it in the morning, they could do it in the evening, they could do it as they're getting ready for something as you do. Um, they could do it quietly, do it with music, do it with sound, do it with words, do it with movement. So it sounds like there's so many ways to do it now that I've talked to you and I have a better understanding of the possibilities that are out there. Yeah, lots. So it's a great new trick um, that will like, at this time of year with intentions, I think it'll kind of benefit any of those other things you were working on, right? Like it, it, from weight loss to not losing your temper to anything in between. So it's a nice boost to anything else you might've been working on. A nice companion habit that yeah. augments whatever you're working on. Yeah. Cool. Well, Shannon, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with us and your sounds yeah. with us. And I appreciate you. Yeah, thanks. It's been good to talk to you again. Yeah, we'll have to chat more. Um, yeah, when you come to the festival in February. I will be there in about a month. Everyone that doesn't know so far, we both participate in our um, our, our beautiful friend Nicole Packer's um, Fuel and Flow Fest, which is um, a wonderful healing arts festival, mostly generated, mostly focused on yoga. But all these other cool things like sound bathing will be there. Yeah, and I do... Uh, the workshop I do is kind of addressing that, that there's lots of different kinds of meditation. I do a five senses class. That's right. So taste meditation, where we're thinking about the thing we're eating, like a raisin or an orange. And then we do scent, and we do sound, and we, I'm a massage therapist, so I do a little hands-on. And then whatever the last sense is, I lost track of what, what I was counting. But I do something with each sight. Yeah, so I do like a visual meditation. So, yeah. That's cool. I love it. Thank you so much, Shannon. We'll talk to you soon. Yes, thank and you. And everyone who is watching, thank you for watching. Keep watching because we we've got more good stuff coming.